Ladies and gentlemen, spoiler season for Everfest has officially begun, and there were some absolutely crazy reveals today, uh, one of which I think has completely changed uh, how perspective of the game should be looked at. Uh, but it's not this card. This card is pretty cool, though. Let's talk about all of the cards in no particular order, except we are going to start with the one that kicked off spoiler season yesterday, and that's even bigger than that, spoiled by Alpha Investments. Even bigger than that is a generic instant at rare. Uh, it has a cycle, so it all costs zero but it pitches for red, yellow, or blue, and then it will change the number of opt here in a moment. We'll talk about that. Um, play even bigger than that only if you've dealt attack damage this turn. So if you've poked at your opponent with some attack damage um, and then probably want to like have given that go again or something to that effect, uh, if you've hit him, kapow, kapow, you got him for like two or something, you then opt three if you play the red version. So you look at the top three cards of your deck, and then choose to put um, those three in whatever order on top, or you can put some on the bottom, any order that you wish. After you do that process, you then reveal the top card of your deck, so whatever you put on top. If it has attack greater than how much you've poked your opponent for this turn, you get to make a Quicken token, which is a token that gives go again to your next attack, and you draw that card. You draw a card, so you take whatever you put on top. So in other words, this rewards you for playing things that hit, for play. It's basically an on-hit effect that you can put onto any attack, uh, which is gross. And uh, in doing so, if it hits, uh, you can then basically just decide what card you want to draw if you see an attack action uh, that has greater attack than what you've dealt. So this definitely requires a specific way to build the deck and specific types of actions. Like if you attack for 8 and your opponent takes 6, uh, well, then you have to go find a 7 or greater attack card, otherwise this doesn't do anything. So this rewards you for playing smaller attacks in larger denominations, so like more small attacks. So basically, it rewards you for playing Cheerios Briar, and this is why Plunder Run was slaughtered, because of this card. This is a really good card, but it is interesting that they're basically taking an on-hit effect and uh, printing it on a card that can be slapped onto anything, which means uh, you may think, like, that's insane, and maybe it is, but it's also a card that you have to play from your hand after something hits. So it's uh, it's taking the idea of printing an on-hit effect and having to basically own a separate card or play a separate card, have a separate card in your hand that you can then play. So it's definitely different than just being an on-hit effect. Don't think of it that way because it is a separate card that you have to put into your deck, which takes up a deck slot, have in your hand, play when you hit, that sort of thing. More hoops to jump through does make it a little bit more balanced. Bingo, cost one, attacks for five. It's a majestic, it's a generic attack that blocks for three, which is really good. Things that block for three are generally really good. When this hits a hero, they reveal a card from their hand. So they pick, they get to choose what card they wanna show you. If an attack action card is revealed this way, so if they choose to show you an attack action card, bingo gains go again. Action point refreshes, you can keep attacking. If they reveal a non-attack action card, then you draw a card. But no go again, unless you like try to give it go again with like Snapdragon or something like that. Now this is a Majestic, so there is no cycle. So it only comes in a one for five. But you can Snapdragon Scalers this because it does cost one. Uh, so that's pretty good. If they show non-attack, um, you're just like, cool, I get a free card and I Arsenal that card or, you know, Arsenal a different card in hand and I'm happy. Or a Snapdragon Scalers. Uh, I guess technically you would Snapdragon as an attack reaction onto this and then uh, they could reveal like an attack action card and basically ruin the Snapdragon like it was no point. Uh, but if they only have non-attacks or something then they're forced to reveal a non-attack, then you get a free card draw off of it. Now I will say this, if they show like an instant, then this does nothing. It's just a one for five, but it still may be just good enough to play as a one for five. So I don't know. Look at this beautiful photo. I love the way that this photo was taken. Nick knack bric a brac cost three. It's a generic action. It's a majestic for the set. Uh, blocks for two, and it says as an additional cost to play Nick knack bric a brac, you may destroy any number of copper, silver, and or gold you control. Search your deck for a card with amulet, potion, or talisman in the name. Put it into the arena, then shuffle for each four copper, two silver, or one gold destroyed this way. Repeat that process. So basically, um, you get to tutor up any of those types of cards, amulet, potion, or talisman, which is kind of cool, um, especially now that they're creating more amulets, potions, and talismans. So you get to tutor one of those up, 
put it into the put it into the arena, and then uh, do that again, depending on how many more coppers, golds, and uh, silvers you destroyed. So if you destroyed like um, a gold and two silvers, then uh, you would be able to do this process twice, which is kind of cool. If you are like an item-based deck, I don't know if uh, if there's going to be item-based decks or decks that play a ton of items that you really want to go searching out for. This does feel more like a card that I would love to play in um, both a, a UPF scenario <laughs> and in PvE. By the way, if you haven't seen, I played in a UPF game that was absolute fire. It was the craziest game of Flesh and Blood I've ever played in my life. If you have, if you have not watched it, it's literally the video that I posted today. Uh, so go watch it because it's really good and uh, I light people on fire. It was really fun. Uh, anyway, like I would play this in that format. It seems really fun in that format. Speaking of a card I'm really hyped about, High Striker costs zero. It's a rare, so we can assume it's a cycle and it blocks for two, which is bad. But it says the next time an attack you control hits this turn, create six copper tokens. Create six copper tokens. Look, this card is one of the reasons why cash-in is being bought out. The other reason is silver tokens are a thing. But cash-in, this is a uh, rainbow foil um, first edition cash-in. I actually bought two of these for a Kasai deck. They didn't come in in time, so I didn't get to play them. Uh, but I played Kasai recently in common, or in, uh, it was like rare slash common. Anyway, these are being bought up like crazy, partially because of this card, because you're just going to be able to get so many copper tokens. It's literally a plunder run for copper tokens. That's cool. I'm really happy about that, because I want to play Kasai, and I want to play this card, and I want to get copper tokens, and then I want to cash them in. That's what I want to do, okay? That card's really good. Speaking of cards that are really good, holy crap. This completely fundamentally changes the way we need to look at Flesh and Blood. This card right here. I'm going to make a separate video on just this card and why I think it's so important that we understand what Legend Story Studios is doing with this card. This card is a fundamental shift in the way that this game is designed or presented. Uh, we may have not known that this design was you know, uh, coming down the pipeline, but the fact that it's here and it is there that obviously you're going to get your hands on in Majestic, Bravo Star of the Show is huge. This is a uh, four health, or sorry, a four intellect, 40 health elemental guardian hero. It's still Bravo, but he's now the star of the show. He has Essence of Earth, Ice, and Lightning, so you can have all three elements in your deck. At the start of your turn, you can reveal an Earth, an Ice, and a Lightning card from your hand. If you do the next attack action card with cost three or greater, you play this turn, gains plus two, dominate, and go again. So basically, basically, at the start of your turn, you have to show, I'm going to use these cash-ins as an example, you have to show an Earth card and an Ice card and a Lightning card, okay? All three of them have to be shown from your hand. Now, if you're smart, maybe you're playing the, um, you know, the pulses. The pulses are like actually two elements, you know, like Pulse of Candlehold is like Earth and Lightning, and then Pulse of Eisenloft is Earth and Ice, right? And Pulse of Volthaven is um, Lightning and Ice. So if you're playing those, then you could reveal that plus the other um, element. And then you get the effect. But you have to reveal all three cards in order to get the effect. But the effect is really worth it. Plus two, Dominate, which is, I think, the biggest thing. And Go Again is crazy. It's incredibly crazy. But again, it does require some setup. All that to be said, this is going to be really fun to build for. And the reason it's going to be fun to build for and why it's so impactful to the game is because it's taking disparate card pools and allowing you to combine them in a way we've never gotten before. We have Guardian Heroes. Okay, bravo. We have um, Elemental Guardian Heroes that could only tap into two of those elements, right? Earth and Ice. Now we have Bravo, star of the show, Guardian, Generic, Elemental, Earth, Ice, Lightning, all available to him. That is a game changer for deck building. Even if, even if it's just like the ability goes off sometimes, the fact that you have access to all of those cards where you didn't necessarily before is crazy. That's crazy. I could talk about that more, but I'm going to make a separate video because I do think that we need to sit down and have a conversation about that. All right, Smashing Good Time, really fun looking card, a really funny looking card. I love 
the uh, just the depiction of it. I, it's like quintessential flesh and blood too, like the shading, um, the shadows, the all of it. All of it's like the art is great. Zero cost generic action at rare um, blocks two. The next time an attack action card hits a hero this turn. In other words, the plunder run effect. You can destroy an item that costs uh, two or less that they control. So basically, you can destroy all potions uh, because all potions I, I can think of cost zero, right? I, I think, yeah. Uh, you can destroy all amulets. You can destroy talismans. You can destroy uh, mechanologist items, which makes mechs really sad. Uh, if, if Smashing Good Time is played from Arsenal, the next attack you play, uh, attack action card, I should say, you play this turn gets plus three. This is literally Plunder Run, except you don't have the draw card effect. You have the destroy an item effect. So it's not as good because we are relying on our opponent having a, um, a an item in the field for the secondary effect. But even if they're not necessarily playing that, you're still getting a plus three for running this. That being said, as I bump the mic, why would you run this if you aren't going up against somebody that has items? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe items are going to become like meta. There's a lot of items in this set. This is not an item. This is an arcane lantern. And uh, as someone who's really, really into wizard right now, I think wizard's my favorite class. As someone who's really into wizard right now, I don't really like this. I don't I don't like this, but I love the card. It's beautiful. Arcane Barrier 1, it's your offhand equipment. So in other words, if you're playing as a hero that has um, you know two weapons, right? Again, I'm going back because I'm looking at cash and Kasai has two weapons, two Centauri Sabres, or um, Kadachis, two Kadachis, right? You can choose to drop one of those Kadachis and instead pick up the Arcane Lantern. So you're, you're hamstringing yourself as far as attacks go for some extra protection against, um, you know, Rune Blade or against um, Wizard. The downside, of course, being that you can't attack as much with your weapons. Uh, the upside, I guess technically if you're like playing Guardian, you can just drop the shield and you can play this as well. The upside is that you have the equipment slot available to you that you would have used for the Arcane Barrier one. So this is a really interesting trade-off. I love, I love the way they designed this card. Uh, and I love that they're taking this idea of like, okay, we, we know over the past two years that you can swap out equipment for different matchups. Over the past year and three quarters, I would say, since Arcane Rising came out, uh, we know that you'd have to swap out for Null Rune equipment or Arcane Barrier equipment to play against like Wizard or Rune Blade. Now we're swapping out perhaps a weapon. So there's more customizability and that customizability is what makes this game fun. Well, it's one of the many things that makes this game fun. It is really, really incredible. Speaking of amulets and talismans and things like that, Amulet of Haven Call is a zero-cost generic action item. Has go again when you play it, so you can just drop this from your hand, not pay anything, don't worry about it. Doesn't block for anything, though, because it's an item. Items don't block, which is funny because, like, if you think thematically, you could probably, like, throw this at someone or, like, hold it up. I don't know. Maybe you can't really block with this. Defense reaction, though. So, like, as a defense reaction, you can destroy this. Search your deck for a card named Rally the Rear Guard. <laughs> Add it to the chain link as a defending card, then shuffle. Activate this only, and this is the this is the kicker, unfortunately. Activate this only if you have no cards in hand. So in other words, this is like if you, well, for one, in order to play this card, you have to be running Rally the Rear Guard, which is not exactly a popular card. I will, I'll be honest. There was a when uh, when they banned Plunder Run, uh, someone posted on Facebook. They were like, uh, you know, now Crucible of War is the only set that hasn't had something banned. And I commented, um, what did I, I said something like, "Hey, looking at you, uh, Rally the Rear Guard. Let's do this. Like, I'm gonna somehow get Rally the Rear Guard to be banned." And look. They've printed a card that allows us to use Rally the Rear Guard. It's still probably not very good. That being said, Rally the Rear Guard does allow you some more defensive plays. And uh, in a way, this is sort of like that last ditch safety valve. You pull the, you, you break the glass in case of I'm about to die. And you play Amulet of Haven Call prior, and then you, uh, as a defense reaction, go and get something so you don't die. Uh, but it does mean you have to play Rally the Rear Guard. So maybe people are going to play Rally the Rear Guard now, which would be kind of fun. Pick a card, any card, so flavorful. This is what I wanted to see in Everfest, is like stuff like this. By the way, this card looks in incredible in foil. Uh, whoever posted this, I forgot already, they posted it in foil as well. 
uh, it's ICV2. ICV2 did. Posted in foil, looks fantastic. Generic action, costs nothing to play. Two, defense, it's rare. Look at the opponent's hand, then name a card. Choose a random card from their hand and reveal it. If it's the named card, create a silver token. Repeat this process thrice. Thrice, there's our thrice usage. So in other words, we get to look at their hands, which is fine. It's, it, it's not as impactful as you might think. But then we get to pick a card from their hand, basically just name a card from their hand. We pull a card randomly out of their hand and then show it to ourselves. And if it's the card we named, then we get silver. You do that three times, okay? The card goes back into their hand, I would imagine. And then you do it again, and then you do it again. So you could make like multiple silvers, which would be really cool. Again, this is a card I would play in like UPF. This is a card I would play in um, in like a merchant that really wants silvers. Again, you need something to spend the silvers on. So I'm looking for like cards that pay off um, coppers and silvers for like generics because this, uh, this definitely wants you to uh, generate like resources. And God, I just, I want a pirate. I really badly want a pirate. Like, just get money and do things and, like, I don't know, man. I think it'd be really fun. Like, gold, silver, I have all this stuff. That'd be awesome. Wild Ride, spoiled by uh, Radio Reflex, is a fun one. Uh, I think it's cost three. No, it's, maybe it's two. I think it's a two for six. Uh, two for six, Brute Action Attack. It's a little blurry, I apologize. When you attack with Wild Ride, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this gains go again. So in other words, it does the brute thing, and in fact, it does the better brute thing. It does the brute thing from Monarch, where you get to draw a card first and then discard it, uh, which is just all the way better. Uh, so, well, I guess not all the way, but it is is really, really good. And so you do this effect, two for six. Even if you miss, it's still just a two for six, which is really good. Uh, you also have the capability of discarding a card from your hand, which is good if you're playing Reinar, because if it's a six attack, then you get the uh, Intimidate effect. And so you trigger this, you get the Intimidate effect, and this gains go again, and you can do more stuff with it. This card seems like a staple. Like, you'd run the reds in Brute. Now, I'm not a Brute Master, uh, but if you are a Brute Master, let me know. I think this is a staple. Straight up, I think you just jam this. Now, the, the downside to this is that it does not block. Straight up does not block. So you are risking your own life to have a card with just huge amounts of upside, but really, really big upside. I think this is the final card we're going to talk about today. Potion of Luck. Cost nothing. Looks beautiful. It's a generic action item at rare, and it says instant. So you can pop this at instant speed. Destroy it. Shuffle your hand and arsenal into your deck. Then draw that many cards. This is like... Oh, this is this is a really cool, like a wizard, like a Kano card. Like I feel like I would mess around with this in Kano just for fun because it's like the ultimate safety valve. Like we have the um, Hope Merchant's Hood, right? But you don't really want to play Hope Merchant's Hood when you're playing Kano because you want to play this Talisman, right? You want to play the uh, Talismanic Lens, and so in order to play the talismanic lens you have to lose the possibility of like mulliganing your hand and trying to look for lethal uh now you don't have to worry about that because you can play potion of luck you can get rid of your hand and draw a new hand like say you have a full red hand your opponent's at seven and you're like i could kill them this turn if i could pay for anything but you can't pay for anything because you have a full red hand you pop this you shuffle those back in, you draw four cards. If you have a predominantly blue deck, maybe you line things up. It does kill your uh, pitch stacking. Uh, but then again, you're you're running this, you're like looking for specific things. This is also a great thing to run in like low rarity um, formats, like uh, commons and rares only. I wanna play this. This is like the Hope Merchant's Hood equivalent to commons and rares because you can play this down at uh, you know on your turn and then at instant speed you can be like I need things that block so I don't die and you swap them out really cool cards oh my goodness all of these cards were cool guys I am so ready for tomorrow <laughs> I can't even believe it tomorrow we're getting like a weapon reveal by the way if you want to know where all of these um, spoilers are being posted or where they will be like cycled through and shown in their final forms 
uh, you can go to the link in the description, FabTCG. I'll put it in the um, I'll put it in the top comment as well. I'll pin it. Uh, check that out. Also, if you want to subscribe, you can make this number that I typed incorrectly and left the entire video. You can make that number closer to reality. We'll go from seven thousand five hundred and seventeen to seventy four thousand five hundred and twenty. Whoops! Not gonna do the video again. Just gonna leave it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like and subscribe. We'll do it again tomorrow. I'll see you again tomorrow. Let's do it together. It'll be fun. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.